Sup, chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, recently I got asked a question that comes up fairly frequently in the comment section. A lot of times I will just answer the question in the comment section and then I'll leave it at that, but this time I think the question is important enough that it is worth covering fully in a video. That question is whether or not taking finasteride increases the risk of getting breast cancer. I'm not talking about just women here, Chooms. Men can get breast cancer too, though overall it's about 100 times less frequent in men than it is in women, just due to the obvious fact that men have less breast tissue than women, unless of course you're Jason Blaha. All men, even men who don't have gynecomastia, still have some breast tissue, so breast cancer in men is still a possibility no matter how rare it might be. In fact, Breast cancer in men is rare enough that the lifetime risk of developing it is only about one out of a thousand men. But even so, we are talking about something that can outright kill you. So in that context, one in a thousand chance is not that low if you really think about it, especially if an asteroid can increase that risk, which is what we're going to explore in this video. After all, nobody wants to get breast cancer, and hair loss witchers deserve to know whether or not they're increasing the risk of developing breast cancer by taking finasteride. So let's go balls deep to and figure this out once and for all. Well, first of all, why would a drug like finasteride even have anything to do with breast cancer to begin with? We're talking about a commonly prescribed drug designed to treat hair loss and an enlarged prostate, both of which are very common conditions. Well, most people who speculate about this, who understand finasteride's mechanism of action, would probably tell you that finasteride can increase breast cancer risk since finasteride can increase serum estrogen levels, and estrogen is thought to be a stimulus for the development of breast cancer. After all, there must be a reason breast cancer is 100 times more frequent in women, and maybe estrogen is to blame for that. But it's not so simple, Chooms. First of all, it is true that finasteride can slightly raise serum estrogen levels, but I emphasize that this increase is very slight, which is probably why most people take the drug with no issues whatsoever. The theory behind this increase in estrogen is that since finasteride blocks the 5-AR isoenzyme that converts testosterone into the trash hormone DHT, you end up blocking one of the roots of metabolism for testosterone. So you would expect testosterone testosterone levels to rise. Now remember that testosterone is also metabolized by the enzyme aromatase into estrogen. So you would expect that if testosterone levels rise, some of this testosterone will end up being converted into estrogen, and so therefore estrogen levels will rise too. So that's the theory, and on paper it does make sense, but does this really happen in practice? Well, Here's an article from 1996. In the study, hormone levels were measured at baseline and then after two years of finasteride use in 22 men. Serum testosterone levels did go up and estradiol levels went up too. However, note that these men were on a high dose of finasteride, 10 milligrams per day, which people don't use nowadays even to treat benign prostatic hyperplasia where the normal dose is just 5 milligrams per day, and of course the dose for hair loss is typically 1 milligram per day or even less than that. But the point is that some studies studies do show an increase in testosterone and estrogen levels with finasteride use, but surprisingly, not all studies show this. For example, this study from 1993 looked at the acute and chronic effects of finasteride use at 5 mg per day. Unlike the previous study we just looked at, finasteride had no acute or chronic effects on testosterone or estrogen levels. Now, these aren't the only studies that looked at the effects of finasteride on hormone levels. This study here looked at over 3,000 men enrolled in a study of finasteride 5 mg per day versus placebo for treatment of benign prostatic hyperplasia. In the study, it was found that serum testosterone did increase with finasteride with a greater effect if the baseline testosterone was low. If the baseline testosterone was more in the normal range, the percentage increase in serum testosterone with finasteride use was about 10%. Unfortunately, the investigators in the research didn't measure serum estrogen levels, which would have been helpful. Despite this, I still think I could conclude from all this that finasteride can raise serum testosterone levels by about 10%. Based on that, it is logical to assume that it can probably raise the estrogen levels too by a very small amount, though this probably varies a lot from person to person since the body tends to self-regulate through what's called homeostasis. It might be that people who get side effects from finasteride, like erectile dysfunction, low libido, or gynecomastia, get those side effects because they have increased estrogen levels as a consequence of using finasteride. This especially makes sense since higher estrogen levels in men can be associated with all these side effects. Of course, as always, I must always emphasize that these side effects are very rare, and usually they can be mitigated by lowering the dose of the drug. In fact, 
it's been shown that doses of finasteride as low as just 0.1 milligrams per day can still be effective for treating hair loss. So it's definitely worth trying a lower dose of finasteride rather than quitting the drug outright if you get side effects. I talked about effective doses of finasteride in my video on the optimal dose of finasteride, which I'll link below. Anyways, it seems from the data that finasteride can increase serum estrogen levels both in theory and in practice, at least in some people who are on the drug. So would that increase the risk of breast cancer? It is an interesting hypothesis, but if we're to find a definitive answer, we need to first explore what the connection is between estrogen levels and breast cancer. Do higher estrogen levels really increase the risk of breast cancer, or is it more complicated than that? Well. Back in the 1990s, women used to take estrogen supplements after menopause because estrogen was felt to be beneficial for treating symptoms of menopause. This is known as hormone replacement therapy or HRT. But HRT fell out of favor in the early 2000s because studies showed an increased risk of cardiovascular disease and breast cancer in women who took HRT. However, more recent data shows that in women who take HRT, the risk depends on the type of HRT used. Most HRT doesn't just contain estrogen, but also another female hormone called progesterone. A recent analysis from 2020 indicates that HRT that contains just estrogen causes only a slightly increased risk of breast cancer in postmenopausal women, while HRT with both estrogen and progesterone more significantly increases the risk. So perhaps estrogen has been demonized a little bit as a cause of breast cancer, but let's stop worrying about the theory behind breast cancer and let's instead look at the clinical data on finasteride use and male breast cancer. Well, some of the largest clinical studies on finasteride that have ever been done were in men not treated for hair loss, but rather for finasteride's other FDA-approved use, benign prostatic hyperplasia. As such, this research used a dose of 5 mg per day and not the 1 mg per day dose used for hair loss. In this study, published in 2003, over 3,000 men were enrolled and finasteride was compared with another BPH drug named doxazosin, which is an alpha blocker drug similar to tamsulosin that works completely differently from finasteride. There was also a placebo control group. During the study period, which lasted an average of 4.5 years, four cases of breast cancer were diagnosed in men on either finasteride alone or finasteride plus doxazosin, and none occurred in the placebo control group. This difference seemed to confirm the fears that finasteride could indeed cause breast cancer in men. In fact, it is this study that started all the fear-mongering about finasteride causing breast cancer, and it is a fear that finasteride haters exploit on a regular basis in order to cope with their decision not to use finasteride. But as you will soon see, this study is just an outlier that has been contradicted by far better and more modern research using superior methodology. This isn't just my opinion either. Even the authors of this article are skeptical of this finding, saying that the outcome may have been a statistical aberration. They note that in another large study of over 3,000 men with BPH, specifically this one, that there were only two cases of male breast cancer, but they both occurred in the placebo control group, meaning neither of the subjects were even using finasteride at all. Also, in an even larger study of 18,000 men, there was no significant difference in the number of breast cancer cases between the finasteride treatment group and the placebo control group. However, this didn't put an end to the fear-mongering. In 2004, this letter to the editor was published in the Journal of National Cancer Institute. The letter cited the 2003 article we just talked about that had four cases of breast cancer in men treated with finasteride. And without considering the other studies that didn't show an increased risk of breast cancer, the writers of the letter Letter concluded that the rate of breast cancer on finasteride was nearly 200 times the rate of breast cancer in the general population. So they are seriously saying here that finasteride increases your risk of breast cancer by 200 fold. I can already see finasteride haters everywhere grabbing out the lube to jerk off to this, that is if their dicks still work, but hold on for a moment here, Chooms, there's a lot more to the story. As it turns out, the writers of this letter were not neutral observers of this data at all. One of the writers was actually one of the subjects in the trial who developed breast cancer, and the other writer was his doctor. The two writers urged the FDA to add a possible association between finasteride use and breast cancer to the package labeling of finasteride. And indeed, it was added, as you can see in the current version of Propecia package insert right here. Breast cancer was added as a possible adverse reaction because of this letter, and other case reports of breast cancer in finasteride users reported in post-marketing surveys. So 
Merck, who are the manufacturers of finasteride, added breast cancer to the package insert, just like they added depression and suicide, as a preemptive measure in order to avoid litigation. There were no well-designed studies to confirm any of these side effects, but remember here, Chums, we're talking about the American legal system here, which has more bullshit frivolous lawsuits than any other country on Earth. I talk about this in my video, which goes over the controversy with Vioxx and Finasteride, which I'll link below, but just know that these side effects were only added so Merck could protect itself against lawsuits, since lawsuits do not need to be grounded in reality. You just need to put on a good show to a judge and jury, and your average judge and jury are just as scientifically illiterate as any other average dumb shit you see on the internet. So. These first studies on finasteride and breast cancer were published in the early 2000s, but fortunately, we have some more recent data on this subject. In fact, we now have multiple high-quality studies that render all this old data completely obsolete. The reason why is because these newer studies use what's called a case control design. That's where the incidence of an adverse effect is compared between people on finasteride and controlled subjects who are matched to be the same age, but who never took finasteride. Also, some of these newer studies actually have have enrollments of literally millions of subjects, which is what you need to do in order to detect a very rare event like male breast cancer. The first article using the study design is this one here. This study only had 339 male breast cancer cases who were compared to 6,780 control subjects, but we do have larger studies coming up soon. I just wanted to go in order of publication. Anyways, this study found no association between the use of either finasteride or dutasteride and the occurrence of male breast cancer. However, this was a relatively small study of only 339 male breast cancer patients with a follow-up of only three years. However, it's time to pull out the big gun here because this next study got their data from an absolutely huge United Kingdom database and looked at all men older than 45 years old in this database. This turned out to be a massive 1.9 million men. This study showed no association between the use of 5AR inhibitors and male breast cancer. In a more recent study from 2017 that used the same United Kingdom database, it was found that the use of 5AR inhibitors was associated with an increased risk of gynecomastia, but again, there was no increased risk of breast cancer. But just when you thought things couldn't get any better, we end up getting a meta-analysis that was published from Good Korea on the subject of 5AR blockers and breast cancer. This meta-analysis also concluded that there was no evidence that 5AR inhibitors increased the risk of breast cancer in men. The authors felt that this might be the case because unlike what the aromatase theory predicted, there are studies showing that 5AR inhibitors actually don't increase estrogen levels, though like I said, I still think it's possible that they do in some people, and that might be what explains some of the side effects people get from 5AR inhibitors even though they are rare. So it doesn't get much more definitive than this, or does it? Well, it turns out there are two other studies to look at here, Chums, and they are both Scandinavian case control studies that drew from databases containing millions of subjects in four Scandinavian countries. And forgive me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there are more than four Scandinavian countries, so I think that's all of them. The first study is this one here. This is another database study, and this one did find an association between finasteride use and male breast cancer. However, there were oddities in the data. For example, the excess risk occurred with lower doses of finasteride, and the highest risk was identified in the first year of finasteride use and decreased over time. As the authors point out, these results are not typically seen in studies of drugs that cause cancer. Normally, cancer risk increases with higher doses of drugs given for longer periods of time, but the opposite was found in this particular study. So how can we explain this weird oddity? Well, the authors propose that the data is more consistent with what they call ascertainment bias. What this means is that when people first start finasteride or any new drug, Drug, they tend to come back and see the doctor several times afterwards. Thus, since these patients are examined more often than people who aren't taking any medication, doctors are more likely to find tumors like breast cancer in them. I mean, after all, doctor appointments often do include routine physical examinations. So the doctors may have been detecting more cases of breast cancer during the first year of finasteride use just simply due to the fact that they were seeing the patients more frequently. The investigators agreed with this and they concluded, quote, the analyses suggested possible ascertainment bias and did not support a clear relationship between dispensed finasteride and male breast cancer." Unquote. Well, because of the limitations of that study, another study looking at the same Scandinavian patient population was published in 2019. This new study looked at a longer follow-up period and tried to eliminate factors that might have confounded the data of the previous study. So, 
Fortunately, this new study found that, quote, no significantly increased odds of exposure to finasteride were found for male breast cancer cases relative to controls. The odds ratio for the association between finasteride use and male breast cancer decreased when accounting for potential confounders, unquote. So, Looking at all these studies, it is clear that there is no association between 5AR inhibitor use and male breast cancer. Some of these studies include literally millions of subjects, so the data is very solid. At this point, anyone who tells you finasteride promotes breast cancer either hasn't done their research or they're just trying to make you afraid of finasteride so that you'll be as bald, miserable, and sexless as they are. Remember, misery loves company, which is why finasteride has so many haters to begin with. The reason this association between finasteride and breast cancer is bogus may be because finasteride doesn't generally elevate estrogen levels that much, but there is another reason for that too. Remember earlier in the video when I said that in hormone replacement therapy for women, it is not the estrogen, but instead it is the progesterone that causes the increased risk of breast cancer? Well, there is one more study that looks at this issue of progesterone causing breast cancer, and this research data indicates that finasteride can actually lower the risk of breast cancer. Now, this is just a mouse study, so I don't want to give the impression anything here is more than just preliminary, but it is interesting data nevertheless. In this study, the investigators found that progesterone stimulated breast cancer in mice, but it wasn't actually progesterone that caused the tumors. It was actually dihydroprogesterone, which is created when the mammary gland cells metabolize progesterone using the 5-AR enzyme. So it looks like dihydroprogesterone is another trash hormone produced by the 5-AR enzyme, at least in terms of causing breast cancer. Anyways. In the study, finasteride blocked the conversion of progesterone into dihydroprogesterone and reduced breast tumor growth. So rather than causing breast cancer, finasteride actually reduced it, at least in mice. But before you get too excited over the idea that finasteride can be used to treat breast cancer in humans, you should realize that the 5-AR enzyme in breast tissue is the type 1 isoenzyme, while in human beings, finasteride blocks predominantly the type 2 isoenzyme. In mice, though, finasteride is a potent type 1 isoenzyme blocker. So these results may not apply to humans, but if anything, because dutasteride is a strong blocker of the type 1 isoenzyme in human beings, it is possible that it might actually reduce the risk of breast cancer. This is, of course, speculative, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see some data on this in the future that shows that dutasteride could be a potentially strong treatment for treating breast cancer in women. Finasteride, on the other hand, only has a negligible effect on the type 1 enzyme, so I wouldn't expect much therapeutic use for it against breast cancer. So that's a lot of data to cover, too. But as we went over, even in research containing millions of subjects, no association between finasteride and breast cancer has been found. If that doesn't convince you that finasteride does not cause male breast cancer, then you probably should just shave it, bro, because you're way too much of a paranoid hypochondriac to take finasteride. Being that breast cancer is a far more common problem in women than it is in men, it would be nice if we saw some female-specific data on finasteride use and breast cancer, but being that there was no increase in breast cancer risk amongst millions of men, I wouldn't expect it to cause it in women either. It is pretty unlikely we would be able to do any studies of this magnitude with millions of subjects on women simply due to the fact that finasteride use amongst women is much less common than in men, although it isn't completely unheard of, and I'll link my video on finasteride use in women below if you want to learn more about that. Hopefully though, this settles the whole question, and I'll be back with more content soon, Chum, so thank you for watching my fellow hair loss witchers. God bless.